in this evening we're going to be talking about the work of Goro Murayama, who is here, and I hope you've had a chance to see his exhibition in the two rooms downstairs. Uh, if you haven't, I'm sure you will uh, after this talk, uh, perhaps over a glass of wine. So I'll just um, briefly introduce Goro and his co-speaker tonight, Dr. Francis Hulsell. Um, so Goro actually um, he has a PhD in oil painting, although there's a lot more going on in the exhibition than oil painting, as far as I can see. Um, I should explain, I actually missed the opening of this exhibition, so I'm, I'm as much in the dark as anybody here and very much looking forward to the explanation. So he, he got a PhD in oil painting from uh, Tokyo University of the Arts, uh, and then spent two years in Vienna, um, supported by a grant from the Japanese government. Um, and he attended a global world and intercultural philosophy course at the University of Vienna. And uh, he's done a number of exhibitions, uh, particularly in Tokyo and in Vienna, um, and has also curated exhibitions. And Dr. Francis Halsell is lecturer at the National College of Art and Design in Dublin. Um, and he has come over here to uh, talk with Goro because his particular interest is on systems aesthetics. And clearly systems play a large part in Goro's work, although that's all I know about it at the moment, and I'm about to understand more. So I think we're going to start with a, a slideshow and presentation from Goro, and then there'll be a bit of discussion between the two of them, and then we'll open the floor to questions from the audience. So, oh, and uh, thank you, Daigo, for organizing this event. Mm -hmm. And Francis, I am pleased uh, that you can join us. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So I would like to open my talk in response to the thing. What is my opinion on system art? And, uh, and I will elaborate how system has became my motive as well as technique. In addition to this, I will further explain my work on the exhibiting work to elaborate how system integrate itself. My, pra my practice might not fit well or maybe I do in the system of art. This question should perhaps not be my decision but for you to draw tonight or our future can confront it. Uh, so, so uh, when we discuss the system of art, you might immediately as associate with a system painting exhibition organized in. 1966, uh, the New York Guggenheim <coughs> Museum. The characters of the artwork exhibited were geometric, perhaps rather hostile composition. They might have taken this mechanical and uh, sense of alienation that was highlighted as systematic. <coughs> The post-minimalism movement have taken further to insistence on close geometric forms, the impersonal object for more open form. And in early 70s, uh, the renowned art critic Toshiaki Minemura uh, have revealed on the art movement on system. In summary, he analyzed as follows. There are two distinctive characters in the notion of system. Firstly, utilizing the existing system like made art, instructional, critical, etc. The example of the, the artists are on Kaora, uh, Hans Hack, and Jan, Jan Jibetz and 
Jiro Takamatsu, and Mario Meltz. The secondary, uh, looking directly at the art art system. What he means by this is uh, emancipating the artwork into system or the methodology in order to respect the autonomy of art. He gave the example of artists such as Saul Lewitt and uh, Hannah Dalboken. I respect his, imme uh, his immediate response to the global art movement, but I also believe that is, it is uh, slightly out, outdated. The system itself re-emerged itself to metamorphosis. Autopoiesis and self-organization added this crucial element. The system of art, these systems have not been explored the notion of the self-organizing or emergence of order. So old poiesis was developed in similar time scale in early 70s. However, Professor Hideo Kawamoto finally brought the notion to Japanese audience in the 90s. So what is autopoiesis in a few words? The one, capacity to regenerate or recreate itself. Two, ability to self-organize. But when I talk about my work on autopoiesis, people compute why it is out or as if anthropomorphism might work. Thinking and creating ideas is automatic beyond one's will. Constructing thoughts or your behavior is also automatic. Response and, and even the sense, senses are recognized beyond control. Of course, when you are working on the responsible role, perhaps you are conscious, conscious enough to endure your thoughts. However, this creative condition, the psychological effect should be part of the work. And autopoiesis accept this value of con unconsciousness, unconscious response. In addition to this, British computer scientist and uh, physician Stefan Wolfram, Wolfram produced a paper on several automata in the early 80s and his best selling con controversial book titled A New Kind of Science with an um, Empirical and Systematic Study of Computing National Systems. The two living system theories are organic, organic and flexible, and uh, I believe that they can be inco incorporated into the system of art into something new dimension. I'm going to explain my artwork uh, that 
that I've done abroad. Um, <coughs> so what is the cellular automata? Uh, abstract simulation model in computer science, artificial life and complex system theory. The model has only deterministic and topical rules, but can generate biological patterns. For example, by Stefan Wolfram's cell, uh, cell automata, the one-dimensional one two possible states cell automata. The, the, in computer, uh, the regular grid of cells, the x-axis is space, and the x uh, y-axis is time, the step by step. The cells have two states, on or off. It represents the <coughs> black and white, black or white. The state of the next cells are defined by referring to the previous step in the in the topical arrangement of cells. The three arrangement, and the next one, the uh, next cells define the, the, that state. Well, in this case, uh, called the, the three arrangement called the neighbor three. So for example, the this row, the study, the generate uh, the chaotic patterns. It's like this. And uh, Wolfram uh, class, uh, uh, make the, the class, the, the, the 256 uh, patterns of classification. Uh, the class one, class, class one, nearly all intentional in patterns involve quickly into the stable, homogeneous state. Any randomness in the initial pattern disappears. The class two, class two nearly all intentional patterns involve quickly into stable or oscillating structures. Some of the randomness in in the interior patterns may may filter out, but some remains local change to the initial patterns tend to remain local. The class three, uh, nearly all in intentional patterns involve in. Uh, the random or chaotic manner. Any stable structure that appear are quickly destroyed by the surrounding noise. Local changes to the initial pattern tend to spread in indefinitely. In uh, class 4 Nearly all internal patterns involved into structures that in, interact in complexity and uh, interesting ways. With the formation of local structures that are able to survive for a long period of time. So the simple and the topical rules around at the enormous scale Unexpected patterns emerge as a whole. That's the emergence, especially uh, class four. Emergence occurs when the whole is greater than the, the sum of the parts, meaning the whole has properties its parts to do the parts do not have. So this is the uh, zero automata patterns, and this one is uh, uh, natural uh, seashell patterns. So I refer to this uh, series and uh, I introduced to my drawing work the theory uh, and the model of several automata to make generative form and visualize time. I, I did model C uh, several automata to facilitate drawing three states and two neighbors. So 
I make the two, uh, uh, two drawings and the combined and the new one. The two different types of drawing are coupled in pairs. Grows up. And in this show, I have constructed a new system for hand draw uh, Serra Automata. I introduced a synchronized time. So I I, I have explained the, the normal serial automata by Stefan Ruffman that uh, that has a syn synchronous time. So all step in uh, all cells in the step define their own states simultaneously. The, the space and next come the step, the simultaneous change the states. And uh, the Gunji's the new theories of several automata uh, are synchronous time. And the cell in the step define their states in the random order. So for, for example, the first, the first one changes the state, and the next one changes the state, and the next one changes the state. It's like this, the, this is a number of the order. And uh, so, for example, the, the third one is already changed the, the, the cell of number two, already changed the state. So, so if in this case, the three, the cell number, number three cell uh, refer the this, uh, These cells, sorry. Uh, so, in case a uh, cell next to it is already defined, that cell refer to it as uh, neighbors. So, according to Gunji, uh, uh, this uh, asynchronous time changes class three into class four. This is class three. So this is class four. The class three pattern changes to the class four in terms of the robustness of the system. According to him, this is close to real biological system because life is exposed to a wild environment. I introduced the asynchronous time into my drawing rules because it could reflect the drawer's individuality and the patterns. Each drawer has a habit in this ordered hand-drawn serial automata, particularly when the drawer fills a cell in each step, its order is sometimes random and sometimes rational. Its creativity latent in the order to proceed. This is a strong point of difference between humans and computers. In the world surrounded by computers and AI, the concept of order is important for human beings to reconsider their recreativity because we repeat acts and choice. So this is uh, the rule of my drawing downstairs.
So this recent work has a voluntary switching system. So normal. Um, Uh, normal server automata has uh, synchronous time and uh, asynchronous time. So some switching. Sometimes, <coughs> sometimes switching. And uh, I wanna, I wanna explain my the weaving work. <laughs> the weaving process of uh, fabric painting. So this work uh, in 2010 in Tokyo. So that work the uh, the the size uh, six meters. So this fabric has a tree structure that started from the S point. This is the S. The tree structure defines uh, defines the the order in which branches are woven. The order follows some sequence to keep the fabric flat. Around this time, I still focused on the flatness <coughs> of the painting, but my painting system gradually changed me by acting I am made. That is also some kind of emergence. It feels as though I run myself in the simulator I organize. So this is uh, my first work, uh, my first uh, weaving work in Tokyo. And this is uh, the weaving, uh, weaving process. So this work has uh, some uh, sequence to the weave. The radial tree structure expanding while uh, branching that has a spiral sequence to weave branches for prana fabric. So I'm going to explain the weaving system simply. The rule of a weaving for weft transverse yarns, making the step. So add on to the next weft, making the branch of weft. We have to have a branch added on it. And next, I uh, have to choice between branching or closing when I add the weft. And the amplitude of the weft defines a single step. It's like this. And I apply the ground work on the step and then draw on it. The drawing patterns also has branches, which cause diversification. The 
sector tree structure has a backhand, backhand four sequence for branching weaving to maintain flatness. like this sequence. And if I want to keep fabric flat, I have to adjust growth speed between adjacent branches. That is the reason for the sequential patterns of branchy weaving. And mistakes make this destroyed shape, but sometimes errors create newness. Is like this. In this work, the mistakes made new structure that caused the layering of branches. This was the turning point for my fabric painting, the emergence of 3D fabric structure. The, from this point on, I actually used the growth speed of each branch as a variable of the system and began to create various various structures. Computer sim simulation runs perfectly with variables give, given in advance. But in my system, it transforms itself by noticing new variable while running. <coughs> I consider this property to be between simulation and poiesis. The important point in this idea is the rules for repeating actions and the variable variability of the order. The branches on both sides grow fast and occupy the space for the central branch to grow. The central branch grows after a new layer is made. The sequence of three. The other codes the new topological structures in my work. The recent work have further developed this aspect of the system. It continues to emerge as a new structure while having the characteristic self-organization of the system. The system also keeps on generating myself. Acting makes me. This is autopoiesis according to Francis Francisco Barrera. My aesthetics are based on envisioning systems that are systemic but are also akin to biological life or metamorphosed themselves and to run them. The concept of order is one of the keys. My art deals with thinking about human creativity in the computer age. observation is that both here and when system gets used in relation to art by artists, by critics and so on we can see that sometimes it's used in two sometimes different ways um, and I I think it's also interesting in relation to your work here right. on the one hand we can see system being used as a metaphor for organization, as a way of 
thinking about the way in which knowledge is constructed and about the, the, the way in which humans think about the world. Right? In other words, it's a human thing that you put onto the world right? as a way of creating taxonomies and ordering and so on. So on the one hand, we have system as a metaphor as an organization, of, of organization. But on the other hand, as I, you see in theories of biology or um, in physics and so on, you have the idea that system isn't a metaphor, but it's actually an underlying structure of reality itself. That it's actually part of the world, not part of the way humans think about the world. Um, now, I don't know where I stand on that, because it seems that actually those are two very different ways of thinking about what system is. Either the system is something human that they put onto the world, or the system is a part of the world that humans are trying to uncover. And I think they're both at play in what, you, what you're talking about there. Maybe we can talk about it. Secondly, of the three points, um, concerns this idea of how system is used in art. Now, on the one hand, I'm an art historian. That was my background. And I find this very frustrating that systems art is often very specifically applied to a group of artists working in the 1960s onwards, right? And that those are artists who were working after modernism, who were using new technologies like computers, telecommunication, and so on, who were using ideas of cybernetics that were developed in the Second World War through radar, radio communication, and so on. And those artists themselves were using systems as metaphors. In some of the artists you use there, for example, were using numbers to create patterns in their work and so on. So that's on the one hand how system is used in art, um, and very closely related to new technologies post the war and so on, particularly in North America and Europe and so on. Not exclusively. But on the other hand, and this is what I'm much more interested in, I think there's a deeper use of this word system which isn't specifically coupled to telecommunications and post-war uh, technology. In other words, that actually, and, okay, so this is my argument, we can find in this desire to create system, or a will to system, or a desire for systematicity as another way of thinking about modernity more generally. Right? That there is in a, in a kind of desire to find organization. Right? And you can find that in Adam Smith talking about the economy as a system. You can find that in political systems that emerge in modernity. You can find that in the way in which knowledge becomes organized. You can find that in the birth of the modern legal system, and so on and so on. I think it's, it's important in this context to recognize that the last book of Newton, Isaac Newton's Principia Mathematica, is called The System of the World. Right? Now, Newton is obviously not talking about computers. He's talking about something else. Um, the first use, not the very first, but the use of the word network, and it relates to this, is not Computer networks, right? The use of the word network is in weaving techniques, right? to create nets, literally nets. And so, on. so you find those metaphors of organisation not exclusive to post-1945 or post-war computers. Is my kind of point. In other words, to get to this point, if we consider that kind of expanded understanding of what system is, I think your work also fits into that in an interesting way because you're also not using new technologies as part of the medium of the work. And so kind of, I think it fits into that kind of broader notion of, of, of systems more generally. And in that instance, we can understand art itself as some sort of system, self-referential. Ideas of, of the autonomy of art or the separateness of art are also not 20th century, right? They go back to sort of the 18th century and ideas of art for art's sake and the autonomy of art. So that's the second point, systems art. Sometimes it's referred to as post-45, I think there's a more general kind of understanding of the use of system in art, which is another way of thinking about modernity more generally, which your work ties into. And then thirdly, I've often made the argument that uh, I'm thinking here about a triangulation, a kind of a three-point thing, that in a model of art, we will also find a model of the human subject. Or in understanding what a work of art is, we will also understand what our understanding of the human is. And that those two understandings, the artwork, the human are triangulated through technology, right? and that they will have a, a, a kind of consequence on how we think about, about the human. We find different metaphors for the human at different points in history, and they're related to technology. Right? One of the oldest is that humans are fashioned out of clay, which 
emerges from the moment when agriculture is the dominant technology. Right? Uh, later we find uh, metaphors for the human as being a regulator of fluids. The four humors, for example, which are fluids that flow through the body. At a moment when canals and water is the dominant kind of form of communication. Uh, we find the human being understood as a book, right? regulated by language. We find an understanding of the human as being uh, a machine. Okay? And right now, get on to the point, I think we're in a moment where it's often understood that the human is a, a computer that processes data. It's based on information. It may be that the, the, the brain is a, is a computer um, that plays out in the hardware of the body. If that's the case, then, and again, I think it's related to your work, I'll stop talking. I think in a model of arts, now in understanding what a work of art is and understanding what the human subject is, if, if we bring a systems understanding to that, then we understand that the human subject as also being like a system. That is, they are creative, but they are also kind of flexible, but they're also distributed. Right? They're also distributed um, amongst the body, but also um, amongst one another. And the, the, the human body is not, or the human, the human um, is not a sort of an individual autonomous agent, but is actually something that is positioned within other systems, complex systems. Technological systems, uh, communication systems, global systems, of, including economics, technology, and so on and so on. Um, systems that might interpenetrate. And I think, again, I came on to, I hope anyway, related to one of your points about how what you're doing here also relates to an idea of the human. Right, so those are the responses. How long did that take? Maybe a, a question. I've got a number of questions, actually. Okay. Um, maybe to start, could you say, you mentioned earlier, that, I mean, it's, it's clearly there. You began from painting. Um, could you say a little bit more about what the relationship of this work to painting is? And the reason I ask is because painting has a very particular history um, with a set of expectations that you can bring to it. So I just wondered, could you maybe say a little bit more about how you began as a painter and how these relate to painting rather than other forms of art? Yeah, so I studied uh, painting department in university. Yeah, so some influence uh, to me uh, from uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, painter and also uh, American uh, post uh, post minimalism uh, painters. Yeah, and um, I have the inner affection towards the painting in my nature. I admire Japanese artists like Natsuyuki Nakanishi, uh, and uh, Masato Kobayashi and uh, Aiko Tezuka for questioning uh, the role of painting. The theme of painting as expanded field does not only stop within contemporary art, Nakanishi attaches an arrow to canvas in order to expand the tension. The Kobayashi makes canvas as he paints. Uh, Tezuka questions the role of paintings today by deconstructing the canvas or the textile. And I referred to some uh, the theory of media. Uh, um, the Czech, uh, Czech, Czech born philosopher, writer, and journalist Pierre Frusa uh, contributed on the anthropological modern media theory on how computer simulation is uh, for furthest development in human creation. Uh, but uh, claiming that how human invented painting. 
text and techno image. The, his idea was uh, refreshing and uh, a new be because he draws painter uh, as set of author and simulator. Is the author, but also as simulator. It led me thinking uh, what painting means today after establishment of the human imagination become, become re re replaceable with techno image. If so, I would like to ex examine the role of painting in my practice. Following from that then, there are two elements to these works. There is the woven base that you have used a particular system to create the pattern. So you followed a set of rules to create this weaving. Um, and there is chance has been introduced into it. This is why it's not, um, there's a little chaos in it. But there is a particular process that you use there for that part. And on the other part, there is this painted surface. So I guess two parts to this question. One, what is the relationship between the painted surface and the pattern underneath? And then secondly, which might be a related point, what process have you used to produce the pattern on the paint? I'm going to inter interpret on, on his behalf. ペインティングのリーディングのカンペスって例えば普通の絵を描く人でも自分のペインティングの so even for the normal, um, no, I shouldn't say normal, any other painter, um, they usually create the canvas for what their require, requirement. So it's similar to that, um, creating that um, environment, initial um, environment to create his own work. だから、えっと、そういう、えっと、so it's what's completely different from any other um, any other artist is because um, he constructs the weaving element and then paint, uh, apply the painting afterwards and then constructs small canvas mm -hmm. and then and then paints um, puts that um, painting furthermore. So little by little, it grows out. Yeah. So he's purposely keeping that interrelational um, relationship um, constantly and as a tension. なんか画面に一筆筆を入れた時にその線がそれを線を書いてそうすると次にその線に合わせて今度はこういう線を入れようとかっていうその思考が同型的な思考が次に生じてくるこうこうこう書いたら次はこうかなとかこうこういうこの
いや、うん、それはあんまり決まってない本当に決まってないだからすごい、えっと、それただそれを1個変えたら次を決める1個が決まったらまた次を決めるっていう感じです um, um, On, in terms of strokes and pattern, um, it is something actually not fixed in rules. Mm -hmm. It's actually response by the, each strokes to mm -hmm. each other. So that is quite depending on the nature. And it's same applies to the color as well. Mm -hmm. So that um, color is dis um, made, uh, um, made depends on the situation and environment and condition. So it, it sounds like there is a interesting tension between the system and the human between i don't know uh, the the artificial and the, the natural or the mm -hmm. artificial and the cultural maybe or the, the natural and the human but the paint on the surface is individual expression whilst the um, support is the expression of a set of rules. Would that be a fair thing to say? そんなことはないと思いますそのまあ、ただそのオートポイエシスの、えっと、理論をその例えばルーマンがその社会学の中にその展開させた時にその、えっと、社,会社会システムだけではなくて人間の,そのメンタルシステムというか思考の心のシステムの方にもそのオートポイエシスの働きというのをその導入する試みをやっていてでそういうものからかなり影響を受けていて。でそのオートポエシスの,そのメンタルシステムというのは基本的に一つの思考が生まれたらその思考によって次の思考がこうあの自己組織的に紡ぎ出されていくようなあのプロセスを持っているでそれ以上はそのメンタルシステムの働きというのもこう規定するようなものがあの、まあ、現状は考え,られ考えられないから、まあまあ、そういう連続性みたいなものとそ,の、えー、そういうものが思考というある単位を持っている。これ僕の場合だったらストロークですけどそういうふうに造形的な思考だとか、えー、とそのメンタルシステムが持っている一つの思考みたいなものの単位が生成されることとその単位とにその連続するように次の単位がどんどん生み出されていくっていうその,シスそのオートプレイスのシステムをその僕のドローイングの中にその入れているので厳密にルールは設定しないけど単位化するとストロークとかで単位を作っていくっていうことをそれがまあこういうふうに。何回でも反復可能なものであるっていうことが一応その、まあ、の僕がそのドローイングの中でその設定しているルールっていうふうになると思います。Thank you very much for your analysis and it's a great point and、um, he,、um, he does、um, believe that、um, he tried to keep the momentum of the system and human and all that.、Um, Um, for the opposite element, but、um, I take that particular、um, example of Luhmann's、uh, how he comments on the society and how he was talking about system, but and he also not only system in a kind of how you describe the、um, structural element, he also t h i n k about mental support and emphasis on、uh, mindset as well, and that's something that I would like to emphasize. And that's how I was drawn to the old poiesis in the thinking behind it. And, but on top of it, um, um, in addition to your point, he would like to describe his stroke as more of a thinking as well. And,、um, and also, he would like to、uh, 
uh, create this continuity and in definite moment so that there are unit of um, sets but at the same time it's a repetition that it can go on forever um, indefinite so that's something that I'd like to, to add to, to your interesting point. Thank you.